Madam Secretary, when then candidate Biden was running back in 2020, he spent a lot of time talking about changing the environment for the automotive industry and electric vehicles and all of the infrastructure that surrounds them. Uh, just this past week in Michigan, the state and GM made a significant announcement uh, moving in that direction. From your perspective in this last year, um, how much movement has been made to uh, really see a big impact to start seeing the fleet in the United States become more and more electric. Yeah, Rick, I mean, you, you make a great point because there is a whole ecosystem surrounding moving to electric vehicles. And one of the first steps that was taken was back in August when the president stood with uh, Detroit 3 uh, and the rest of the auto industry to say that half of their fleets will be electric by 2030. Since then, you have seen, um, I want to say, 13 different battery plants announced that they're going to open up in the United States. You, you've got a commitment on the part of many of these companies that 100% of their fleet or close to it is going to be electric. There is just a huge movement right now toward electrification. And then the bipartisan infrastructure law helped the infrastructure with that by saying it was going to invest in creating 500,000 EV charging stations across the country. When you think of uh, those charging stations and deploying all of that, as you call it accurately, infrastructure, um, how do you balance that from a governmental standpoint? I know it's not all on your shoulders because it's also about the private sector, but, but how do you make sure that as the cars roll out, that the chargers are already in place and that it's it's kind of a, um, you know, which comes first scenario. Do you put in a lot of chargers that aren't being used or how do you balance that? Yeah, it's a really great question. You have to do both supply and demand, right? So for example, we just created an office with the Department of Transportation to give guidance to states based upon our labs, our national labs um, documenting where the gaps are in the infrastructure ecosystem. So for example, the, the private sector has done a great job of building out charging stations in areas where there are already electric vehicles, but has not gone understandably to places where there aren't a good penetration of electric vehicles. So this is where the government can step in to fill in those gaps in rural areas, in areas, um, in urban areas where there isn't a big penetration in poorer areas, and to fill in the whole network, including electric vehicle charging stations across the freeways, the highways, so that people won't have range anxiety. So that's number one. That's, of course, the supply side. And then on the demand side, making sure that there is a bigger uptake of electric vehicles. And that's what the president's Build Back Better agenda is all about, providing a, a very significant tax credit at the dealer, sort of off the top, when you go and buy an electric vehicle up to, and it's again, if it passes, right, up to $12,000 off the price tag of an electric vehicle to make it comparable to an internal combustion engine. So on both strategies, it's very important. And um, the Department of Energy and the Department of Transportation will roll out that guidance uh, starting in February, getting information. And I think by uh, the summer, you'll start to see that money flow, $7.5 billion from that infrastructure bill.